good afternoon, good late afternoon. I hope your day is great. Everyone's having a wonderful day. Everyone's being safe and you're off. Well, I ain't going to say off to a great start because it's not early anymore. It's pretty, pretty late. Not even midday anymore, but I just hope that you all are having a great day and enjoying your time with your family, friends, whomever. You're having a good day at work, at school, at home, whatever. So how's everyone's day today? My day is great. <laughs> uh, just trying to make it, you know, taking care of some stuff. Got some things situated and stuff today. And that's about it. And I don't have any plans. So what are you all's plans for today? It is Tuesday. Week already going by fast. It's already almost the mid of, middle of the week. But. Hope it is a good one and you're making the best out of it. So, recap. We are in Exodus chapter 3. Um, yesterday, we were in Exodus chapter 2, um, the birth of Moses, where he was born. And remember, um, Pharaoh gave the order for all the baby boys to be um, thrown into the Nile. And so here it is, chapter two that we read yesterday. Moses was born and his mother hid him for however long she could until she couldn't anymore. So she made him a basket. She put him in a basket and she put him along the Nile. And of course, um, Pharaoh's daughter happened to um, found him and she took him in. And of course, when he got older, when he grew older, she, um, she became her son. So, um, remember Moses, he ended up killing an uh, Egyptian because he, seen, he saw an Egyptian being on a um, Hebrew, um, one of the Israelites. He saw um, one of the Egyptians beating on one of the Hebrews. And of course, he didn't like it. So, he ended up killing this, he, um, this um, Egyptian. And after he killed him, he tried to cover it up. He hit him in some sand and went on, went on about his business. And so, of course, another day came about and Moses happened to see two um, Hebrews fighting. And so, you know, upon him seeing them fighting, he was like, you know, why are y'all fighting each other? You know, it's already enough that the, Israel, the, um, the Egyptians are putting harsh labor on you all and treating you terrible like this. And yet y'all are fighting amongst each other. And so, of course, Moses has something to say about like, why are you fighting each other like that? And so they're looking at him like, you know, who are you to, you know, try to judge us or put judgment on us? And then, of course, they threw in his face about um, this person they had mur that he had murdered. It was like, um, are you going to do to us what you did to that other person? So with them saying that, that uh, alerted uh, Moses that, hey. I thought one nobody looking, but obviously somebody saw it. Somebody found out about it because here it is. It's being thrown in my face. So with him knowing that, that was alarm for Moses to leave and flee there. And he took off. And of course, Pharaoh found out about what he did. So Pharaoh tried to kill him. So Moses took off. He fled to um Midian, which is where he met his wife and he got married to his, he met his um what's her name? Um Sapara. He met her and they got married and they have a son. So that was a recap of Exodus chapter two. So here we are, brings us in Exodus chapter two. And of course, yeah, at the end of Exodus chapter two, where at the end of that, after he got married, they had a son. Um, remember the Israelites were being treated terribly. And so their cries were just so severe and they were, it was just, their cries were deep. And it was to the point where it started to draw more and more attention to God to where it was concerning to him. And so that's what we left off with that. And so now we are on Exodus chapter three, Moses and the burning bush. So we're going to read about Moses and his burning bush. So let's we're, do a word of prayer. Let's pray. Get your Bibles, your phone, app, or however. However, you can read along, um, read along with me, or you can just listen, however. But um, we'll get do a word of prayer and then we'll get right into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. 
God, we thank you for whatever the enemy tried to turn into evil. God, you turned it around for our good. God, some of us started off in some mess. Some of us started off in a good, um, a wonderful day, and it turned into some mess, God. But throughout all of that, you turned it around and you worked it out. You blessed it, God. So we thank you so much for helping us to keep our head held high and for working our circumstances out. Thank you for those that you blessed in our lives to help us along that um, journey. Father, I ask that you please forgive me of my sins, forgive my family, friends, forgive everyone that will be on here now and later on, God, and the days to come. Bless them, God. Give them wisdom and understanding in your hearing of your word, Father, the reading of your word, Father. I ask that you use me. I ask that you talk to me, through me, and for me, Father God, as I read your word. Help me to understand it, Father. Help the words to come out right. And help me to be able to talk about it. Help us to be able to learn together. Help me to be able to share with others, Father, that may not know your word or may not understand it. Father, whatever it is that I may not understood before, help me to understand it now. But God, give me wisdom and insight on it, Father. Thank you so much for this privilege again today, Father. Please forgive us and watch over us and see us through. Let your spirit fall down upon us, Father God. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, Moses and the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, okay? And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, Horeb, the mountain of God. So um, Moses came, he led the flock and he led them to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, which is um, the mountain of God. So this is where Moses ended up at. So there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. And remember um, back in, no, no, getting ahead of myself. Back up, sorry. Don't even, don't pay no mind what I just said, okay? Let's just go on and finish reading on reading. Okay, so there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that, Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So, of course, in your mind, you see something on fire. You know that anything that catches on fire is going to burn, right? Sheds to pieces, you know, and just dissolve. It's going to be gone. Ashes, whatever. And here it is. He sees this bush is on fire. And what was more even captive, it was already captivating because the bush is on fire, but even more captivating that the bush is on fire and it's not... It's, it's, it's not burning. It's not, you know, shriveling up, tearing in pieces, crumbling up or whatever. It's just still intact. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this straight, this strange sight. He said, I will go over and see the strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. We're going to do that too. But at the same time, you know, like, hold on, this ain't right. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking of a horror movie at this moment because I'm I'm looking at something that's very strange. You don't see strange things like this often at all, really. But when you see stuff like this, it's going to catch your attention and you're going to want to go look at it. Then, I mean, you know, we scream in movies like, don't go, don't do that. But, you know, in reality, you know, we might do, we might not, I don't know. But something like this, I'm, I'm no, I'm just going to be skeptical. I, I just really can't say it's easy to say what you would do in a situation like that. But being faced with it, you just really don't know what you do. But you you will be curious. Your curious mind is kind of over it working now. Like, OK, I, I got to see what's going on. Like, I don't know. <laughs> what would you do? But anyway, he went over to see about this strange sight that he saw so when the lord saw that he had gone over to look god called to him from within the bush moses moses and moses said here i am do not come any closer god said take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground so he told him to take off his sandals because where he was standing at was 
holy. It was a holy ground. It was a holy place where he was standing. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Would you be afraid to look at God upon God coming to you and speaking to you and he saying what he said to Moses? What would you do at this point when God said what he said? Again, easier said than done. You, oh, I do this, I do that. But really, would you really do it? Because again, you're basing it off what you think based off how you feel at this moment. But something like this happening, how you're feeling now is not going to be the same feeling if you're seeing this and hearing this at that moment. But this is what Moses did. He covered his face. He was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up and to bring them uh, and to bring them up. I'm sorry, I lost my place. OK, so I have come down to rescue them. From the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land and land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Because the Egyptians were really oppressing them with all this forced and harsh labor on them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So God is using Moses to go to back to Egypt, the place that he had already left. He fleed from to go save these people because their cries, their outcry has been heard. Their outcry has been heard by God, and now he is concerned. He's, he's very concerned now because he's seen what they are going through. He's hearing what they are going through, and now he wants to, he's ready. Okay, I, I got to do something about this because they are just being treated very harsh and just terrible. So now I have to go down and rescue them, and I'm going to use Moses to do it. Because remember, anything that God does, God doesn't just do it by himself. He could, but he doesn't. He uses us to complete his mission and whatever the mission is. And so here it is. He has a mission. I want to rescue my people, the um, Israelites, and I'm going to use Moses to do so. So, um, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Okay. What mountain was that again? It said that he was led, his flock was led far side of the desert and came to Horeb. The mountain of God. Okay. All right. So he said he was going to bring him back. He was going to come back to that mountain and worship God on that mountain. So Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? So here it is. Moses just asking some question. What should I tell him? Who am I to do this? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever the name by which I am to be remembered for a generation 
to generate from generation to generation okay so he said go assemble the elders of israel and say to them the lord the god of your fathers the god of abraham isaac and jacob appeared to me and said i have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in egypt and I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. When you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. Okay? So he already knows that the king of Egypt will not let them go unless a mighty hand compels him. Whose other mighty hand would that be? God's. Okay? So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. So in other words, he's saying none other or no other can get Pharaoh to let these people go that will allow him or make him or keep him from letting these people go. It was going to take something, someone or something stronger to intervene to for these Egyptians to be for the Egyptians to be let, I mean to be set free. So he also said, and I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters. And so you will plunder, oh, excuse me. And so you will plunder the Egyptians. <laughs> so that concludes our reading for Exodus chapter three. So here we are seeing that God yet is using another person to be a blessing to others as he did Joseph. Remember all this turmoil he went through, but God was using him in all of that. He brought him to this place to be a blessing to save lives. And here it is now, um, Moses here is being used to save the lives of the Israelites from them being oppressed by the Egyptians. So we're going to read tomorrow what happens. Because here we are now. God is sending Moses. And I already had a conversation. I already told him what to do. Go to the elders. Go talk to them. Tell them what I said to say. Tell Pharaoh what I said to say. And I'm going to allow all these things to happen. He said, he is going to stretch out his hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that he is going to perform amongst them. So imagine and think about all these things that got all these things that God is going to do and allow to happen in order for the Israelites to be set free. Now, God is a God of a certain order and he could just set them free just like that. But God don't do it that way. God do it the way he wants to do it. Because there's always a purpose behind how he does it and when he does it and why he does it. And this is the way God chooses to set his people and chooses to set the Israelites free. Because he can just cause a disaster right now. I mean, he could have just caused a disaster and just say, oh, wipe them out. And that's the it. And the Israelites are just going about their business. But no, it's the order of how he wants it to be done. And this is his order. This is his way of doing it. Moses, you go down here, you do this, follow my directions, follow my lead. This is how it's going to be done. And watch and wait while I do what I do. So, this is what God does for us. Follow my lead, follow my directions. 
God gave Moses directions. God didn't, he wasn't giving, um, he didn't give Joseph directions. He was just giving them dreams and all these things was happening and Joseph didn't know why they were happening. Eventually later on down the line, he eventually understood why the things that were happening, but God didn't say, oh, go here and do this and do that. He wasn't giving Joseph these directions as he was Moses. But here it is, Moses, he's giving him directions and he's telling him what to do. And so God gives us direction. And all of them are different. They're all different directions, but he leads us all in his own way and gives us directions as to the things that we should do and the places we should go and the things that we should do. And we either choose to listen or not listen. And sometimes things that he may tell us to do may be uncomfortable. We may not like it. We may not want to. Well, why God? Why I got to do that? Why I got to do this? You know, but it's all for a purpose. And as we continue to read the story of Moses, we start to see, we start, to, we'll start to, it'll start to unveil why that purpose was as we seen with Joseph. Yeah, Joseph, oh my goodness. Why am I going through this? Why? I, I'm going through all of this and may not even know why and don't even understand it. But as time goes by, it starts to unveil itself and you start to see the blessings behind it as to why I'm going through this. Why God is allowing me to go through this. And so we will see why Moses and what the outcome is going to be and all the different things that Moses is going to have to do and the things that God is going to lead him to do and the things that God is going to do as well. We're going to start to see all of that unveil. So in your own life, see how God is going to shape you and shift you into doing some things that he has ordered you to do. Because sometimes God is always talking to us, but a lot of times we're not listening. We're not paying attention. And sometimes we are listening and paying attention, but we don't want to do that. We're, we're not ready. And when God is calling you to do something and he's telling you to do it, it ain't a matter if you're ready. It's you're not ready because you don't want to do it. It's not that God didn't give you what you needed because if he's telling you to do it, he's gay, he, he's already prepared the, um, the way for you, but it's just the uh, ish itself. It's not God itself. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it right now. I'm not ready, but you are ready. You just don't want to do it. So um, be mindful when God is calling you to do something. God is tugging on you. This is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. You got to do it. Because not doing it, it, it comes with consequences and you may not realize or understand the consequences that may come about not doing it, but they're not good consequences. But anytime God is calling you to do something, he's calling you for a great purpose to do it. And you don't want to not do it because you don't know the blessing that's coming behind not following him and doing as he said do. So if he's telling you to go to some place and you know it's uncomfortable, you don't want to, but you know in your heart, Oh, Lord, I know you want me to do this, but I don't want to do it. I, I don't I don't feel right. You might even come up with all the excuses as to what, not why, why, not me. You can't be calling me to do this. Who am I? You know, I'm just, I'm this and I'm that, you know. But God can use any person in any situation and in any circumstance. You can be poor. You can be rich. I don't care what your situation is. Because God can use you in all those situations. And I don't literally mean I don't care about your situation. I care about your situation. What I'm saying is it doesn't matter your situation. He can use you in any situation. So you don't have to be in this high situation where you know everything about God's word or you're that close to him and you just have such an awesome and great relationship with him. It, it doesn't have to be there to where he uses you. He can use you at your lowest and you don't really know him or know him like that but he can use you at any point of your life. 
just be ready to answer when he calls because he's taking you on a great journey and i ain't saying it's gonna be easy but as he told moses he was gonna be with him throughout that whole journey he was gonna he said his words were um let's see Bear with me. I'm just looking for what he actually said to him. Okay, so this is when God told him to go. He said, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And then um, God said, I'll be with you. Okay, he said, I'll be with you. So keep that always in your head whenever you know God is leading you to do something, go somewhere, talk to somebody, whatever it is, and you feel like I can't do it. How can I do it? I, I'm, 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 I am who I am and I, 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 don't, I, I just, whatever, whatever reasoning you try to talk yourself out of doing it, always remember God says he'll be with you always. Why wouldn't he be with you? If he's sending you to do it, why wouldn't he be with you? He's telling you to do it. So before even telling you to do it, he's already prepared the way. He's already gave you, he's already given you what you needed. So now he's just giving you the word. This is what I need you to do. It's up to you to listen, follow, and obey. So um, thank you again for um, listening today and tuning in. I pray and hope that you were blessed by the word and just what God has spoken to me to be able to talk to you about and being able to gain insight from this scripture with Moses and being told to go rescue the Israelites. So I pray that you continue on this journey with me as I continue to read out throughout Exodus and we continue to learn and share and grow together. So um, you all, I want you to all have a great day. Be safe out there. Um, remember to love on each other. Um, pray for one another, uplift and encourage one another. You know, be kind, speak kind words, um, be a blessing to others because you just never know what small kind act that you um, share or be towards someone else. You just don't know how 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 that will bless them in such a way. Just the littlest things can be such a blessing to someone else. So remember to do those things and be kind and keep God first in all you do. So I will leave you all with a word of prayer and uh, let you get back on to the rest of your day. Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for everything. And God, I thank you for giving me the determination and the willingness, God, because things got a little sidetracked early, a little um, not too long ago, Father. And I was almost to the point where I just was going to cancel today and I wasn't going to do this today. But God, I thank you for giving me the heart and the mind frame and the willingness to get on here and do this as I said I would do every day. So thank you for your love and your patience with me and your love and patience for all of us. And just thank you for continuing guiding us and leading us and showing us the way. And God, I ask that you just continue to just bless us, Father, and just keep us safe throughout this day and help us have a great day. Help us to continue to grow and share in your word, Father. Help us to gain wisdom from it, Father, and help us to apply it every day of our lives, Father. Continue to give us insight, Father, the things that we don't understand, the things that we are lost on, Father. Give us insight on it. And God, whenever you call us, whatever it is that you're asking us to do, wherever you're asking us to go, and whatever you're asking us to say, God, help us to answer and help us to obey and follow you, God, because we know that, God, that there is a blessing out of it, God, because we know, God, that you are going to be with us every step of the way, God. We know that it won't be easy, God, but you will give us what we need to endure it and get through it. So, Father, bless us. Guide us. 
forgive us, and lead us where you will have us go. Help us to do our parts as your children, as you have called us to do. Heal us, comfort, and protect us, Lord, and deliver us, God, from ourself and the sin that lies within. Deliver us from the hands of the enemy, God, and help us to resist. Remove whatever stumbling block that may stand in our way, God. Help us to not lose um, lose um, focus or get off track, Father. But if we do, God, help us to get back on track, Father. We thank you so much and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. All right, you all love you and you have a great day. Enjoy. And I will be back with you tomorrow. God willingly. Mwah.